Hey yo, um, just testing this. And, yep. Okay, cool. All right, um, I'm gonna be showing you some of my favorite synths and plugins and options for resampling. Um, and I guess we'll just jump right into it. First things first, uh, Serum, right? Uh, one of the most popular synths right now, so I suspect most producers will have it. And if they don't, that's fine. But it's definitely my favorite. So we're gonna be working over here in the Noise tab. And the Noise tab stock comes with different kinds of white noise and some like percussions and stuff. But normally it's just like just different kinds of white and pink noise. But you can drop any sample that you want in here. A lot of people don't know about that. So one thing I like to do is I will take, let's say like a pluck. Let's just use this one. And make that fade out. Yeah, okay. drag and drop that in Serum and activate the keyboard option so that you can play different notes. Cool, right? So here's the thing. You can, you pretty much can take any sample and instead of being limited to two oscillators and whatever waveforms you can come up with, you can just throw samples in there and then apply the entirety of Serum to that sample, which kind of opens up a whole world for you. So generally, generally this level is going to be low. You might not notice that at first, so it's going to be really quiet. Just go ahead and turn that up. All right, so let's talk about this pitch here. This pitch is actually pretty powerful because this goes all the way down like three or four octaves and it goes up three or four octaves so it's super sensitive right um let's throw an lfo on there and just to give you an example right um so if you're going to be like adjusting the pitch or if you want it to be like plucky, right? You got to be like real careful and only adjust it a little bit so that you can like, cause a lot of people like to adjust the pitch at the beginning. So every time you hit it, it's like plucky, just, oops. Yeah. It's like real sensitive. Yeah, but you can also use it to get some like intense, pretty intense risers. So I think that's what we'll do. Um, and that actually, yeah, okay. So I, uh, we're gonna make some risers then. And that's gonna lead us into our next form of resampling. Uh, we're gonna use Edison for this and we're gonna use just any plugin that has a saw wave and so I'm just gonna use 3x oscillator to show you, you don't need a lot just turn this all the way down to like zero so that it's down two octaves from normal so normally it's like yeah get that nice and low and then this is in one so I'm gonna throw in this so a factor in my opinion is pretty powerful it's a free plugin uh i use it in fl i'm not sure if it's compatible with other uh daws but i think i think ableton for sure so this comes in this comes built in with like distortions and phasers and stuff but i really like this one which is a 
formant filter, which gives you those vowel bases. And so what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to compress that. Let's get it. Okay. So it's not peaking or anything. And then I'm going to throw Edison in here and just record that. Okay, cool. Uh, generally, the longer the sample, the better. Because uh, we're going to take the sample and we're going to drop it into Serum. And if you hold the note too long, it's going to go through the whole sample and it's going to reset here. And if the sample is not consistent, you're just going to get this really nasty like click as it goes from here to here. And we don't want that. So if you have it probably like 30 seconds long, then you eliminate any chance of that happening. And also, I'm going to turn on this random all the way up so that it starts every time you hit a key at a random part of the sample. Right? So it might start here. It might start here. It might start here. Um, and that way you get a totally unique sound every single time you press a button, which for a lot of producers I know is a big leg up uh, to keep things from being too monotonous and repetitive. Oh wait, yeah, remove that. Cool, I'm gonna compress that really quick and then we'll get things started. So let's make like a riser here and make it real slow. Cool. Get some effects on there. Bit of delay and reverb and have those slowly fade in. So you can do that. Um, you could use this for like leads if you want. So you can also apply, see like this filter here, just activate it so that it's adjusting the noise. And I personally, for like saw waves and just sort of basic wavetables that I put in here to resample, uh, or like bass noises, I like these uh, phasers because they just sort of boost certain frequencies that I am looking for. And I personally like to just sort of have it moving at like a random speed that's not really tied to the BPM or anything. Just make it a slide around a bit, activate these two. Hell yeah. All right, so that's pretty basic, but when you think about being able to resample in here, you can throw anything you want in there. And so real quick, I'm just gonna plug the Glitch with Friends sample pack. Totally free to download, feel free to go and get that. Um, and in here we got like some drum loops. Let's see if we can get anything interesting going on here. All right. Seems cool to me. All right. So let's say like, imagine you're making an intro, right? And you want the beat to come in, in like a pretty interesting way. This is what I like to do. So activate 
an LFO on the pitch, have the pitch slowly come up from, say, I don't know, it's really sensitive. I'd say like minus 24 notes, so like negative two octaves. And just gonna test. Okay, so that's going backwards. Okay. Right, maybe get rid of this phaser. Or keep the phaser in and have it slowly fade out. Be a good idea. Right. All right, maybe do the same with like a delay. And reverb. Not bad. I mean, totally you can get like creative with this. Use different filters, maybe like hyper dimension. Fuck around with like the panning would be kind of cool. Here we go, okay. So we're doing this. Not bad. Not bad. Um, yeah, you could throw... Let's see. I like to use this to get really interesting uh, noises. So they just got a whole like glitch noises section. Let's drop that in there. Hi, Cloud. Um, You can just hold shift and just click around here, right? To get uh, just squares, instead of having it be like a normal rounded off wavetable or like a saw or whatever. And then take that sample, which is already pretty interesting, You're moving around a lot. Just mess with the pitch and then the panning here. Let's just make that a bit more random. Trigger, not off, and then, yeah. <laughs> Right, pretty whack. Um, you could also, and this will open up a whole new world if this is the kind of sound you're going for. Let's see, insert one, why not? Um, add a peak controller, right? And I can't remember where I learned this. I'd give you a shout out if I could remember who showed this to me, where I learned this, but so the 3 p controller, a lot of people use it for side chaining. I do too. But this LFO here, um, if you turn the volume up, you'll see what it's doing. So it has this shape here. It's making a sine wave and then a speed knob here. You can slow it down or speed it up. It also has a random option, and I didn't click it. It's there. Okay. <laughs> so you have a random option. And then you can set the speed to like something attuned to the BPM so that it's not going to be fully random, but feel free to play around. And so what this is doing is it's changing the input from zero to a hundred and anywhere in between at a totally random process. And you can link anything in Serum to this, right? Serum doesn't really have a lot of great ways to get random noises. You kind of kind of just draw really freaky wavetables, but this will be just truly random. And so in FL, what you do is 
you just turn a knob because you can't right click and create an automation clip or link it to a controller. You don't have that option. So what you do is you adjust the knob you want and then you go to tools, last tweaked, link to controller. And we want it linked to the LFO here because that's what's doing all the fun stuff. So peak control LFO and then just accept. And as you can see, let's see if I can detach this. Yeah, as you can see, right? It's just, it's popping off, bro. And then you just add a bunch more peak controllers going at different speeds for like different knobs and stuff. And then you just get totally, to like every time you hit a button, just a totally random, totally new sound that you'll never hear again. And so you just sit there with Edison, hit record and just start pressing buttons. You know what I'm saying? And play around and then resample that and then drop it back in here and just do it again and just see how far you can get. So let's see here. I want the mix linked to it as well for my filter. And normally I'd have like multiple peak controllers going at different speeds, but right now I'm lazy. Um, and then the mixes on these are fine. And then as well as the fact that this is moving around so much, <laughs> just drop like one of these on there that's also moving at a random like speed. It's moving at like 0.4 Hertz and then just like. Pretty nuts. I want the mix on this also. Yeah, okay. So like I like hyperdimension. It's not bad. Uh it's just sort of like a stereo thing where it just makes your mix wider or smaller. Like more stereo. Um and <laughs> Hell yeah. So lately in my music, I've been trying to incorporate a lot more of those sounds into my tracks. And it's been really helpful for me. So, um, let's move on from Serum. Because I'm bored now. And we are going to take a look at... Keep Edison, get rid of this. We're going to take a look at Fracture next. Fracture is a fun one. Okay, so what Fracture does is I don't know. Um, I downloaded it off the internet and it just makes some of the most whack noises. So basically what you do is you throw Fracture into any insert you want. And what I personally like to do is take like a full completed track, right? Uh, so let's see here. I'll take my song, I don't know, this one, right? And just take a section of that song. Yeah, okay. And then just put this in insert one, because that's where our fracture is. And you got all sorts of options to play around with here. And it comes with like a bunch of presets and stuff. But I think the best way to show you what fracture does and what fracture is capable of is just to press this button down here. This is like a randomizer, right? Every time you click it, it'll just give a random input to each knob. And then this dry wet knob here, just turn this all the way up. So I don't want to hear anything coming from the original sample. I just only want to hear what Fracture's doing. And then just hit play and keep hitting uh, the random generator. And I'm going to be recording this because I usually get some fun sounds out of it. <laughs>
So it sounds a mess <laughs> in this particular case, but I'll show you some of the things that I've been able to whip up with it. So let's see, my soup pack just sounds that I've made. Um, let's see, fracture, my fracture folder. Let's just see some of the stuff that I've made with this. This one's like four minutes. Yeah, no, I, I spend like a ridiculous amount of time just sitting there with fracture, <laughs> just pressing the randomized input button. I just got an idea all right so this is going to lead us into the next step of our video so slice x keep in mind these aren't singular singular methods like you could record some ridiculous sounds in serum that you resampled of some baseline and then drop it and run it through fracture and then take fracture and then run it into slice x and then slice it up and then play around and make like a beat with whatever you resampled in here, right? Like something on beat and then throw that back into the serum noise, uh, noise oscillator and then just like keep going and just get more and more ridiculous noises, you know? And eventually you just have a bunch of ridiculous samples that you have no idea what to do with until one day you're making a beat and you're like, oh, you know what? I have like the perfect sample for this that I made. A lot, a lot of my samples in here just sit there, but you never know, you never know. So slice X, everyone's pretty familiar with this, but if you're not, if you drop a sample in here, it's going to automatically just slice it up into a bunch of pieces based on where like samples start or where it thinks samples start. So like you can see it more visibly here. So I prefer to use it for like drums because there's some very clearly defined sections in like a drum loop. But I think you can use it for anything you want and get creative. So I have this sample running through it right now. And I don't know what the original sample of that was, but now... We have it in the piano roll, and here's what I like to do. So you have a couple options. If you want to, like, you could totally just sit there and try to draw in, like, a beat if you want. But I like this randomize option here. You got to kind of highlight a wide area to get it to fill. All right. So this random note generator is pretty fun and useful, especially when you have like a million samples and you don't really know what to do with them. So you have a population knob here and a length knob here and a variation knob here, right? And for my particular case, the samples I have, I probably want to just use the quickest uh, note possible. And let's just see what this sounds like. No, shit. Gotta switch this and then do it again. Uh, 
oh yeah, stack. Um, so you can have multiple notes playing at a time. So in this case, it will have up to six notes playing at a time. I prefer to use one. And you'll notice it's on beat as well. So it's not like truly random. You can totally play around with it and get it to be more randomized if that's what you're looking for. If you want like really quick percussions, there's a little volume tab here and then go to envelope and apply like a really quick cutoff on the envelope so that the volume cuts off really quick. And with longer samples, I like to do this where you take this speed tab here and apply an envelope just swooping up. Not too useful with the samples I have here, but for like drum sounds and stuff, it works pretty well. It makes some cool noises. And let's see. So with certain with certain like styles and tracks, I mean feel free feel free to throw literally anything you want into there. If you get something you like, then keep resampling and keep playing around and having fun with it. Um, let's see, what else could we throw in here? That might be fun. All right. So, auto slice, medium auto slicing maybe? Nah. Oh yeah, I have the volume envelope on. Take this, drum sample, randomize, change the octave so it's higher, and I forgot to highlight along area, and then randomize again, and do it right this time. Hit the seed button and it'll just randomize them over and over again. So if it's not going fast enough, which in my case, it's not. Hold, um, highlight the area, hold Alt, and it will snap to the grid, and you can adjust the speed however you want while keeping it on beat, and you don't have to like be super precise with it. <laughs> better with certain samples and others certain drum loops but I'm kind of winging this right now I usually spend a few hours just screwing around sampling stuff resampling stuff throwing stuff in serum and just sitting there listening to fucking ridiculous stupid noises for like three hours and then my parents contemplate kicking me out of the house <laughs> let's see all right Here's another fun one. I talked about this before, but I didn't go too in depth with it. So here is another cool thing you can do. So Edison, lots of people use it for resampling, but it's pretty powerful in and of itself. So let's say ambience. You got an ambient sample. Right. 
or maybe you made some pads and you recorded them into Edison, right? Something like that. Um, you go to tools and then you go to here, blur. And what blur does in particular, I'm not sure. Uh, you'll hear it. I'm not sure exactly how this works. I just know what to do for certain sounds. So you do this, like the amount of blur here. I'm going to set it to 50%. It's kind of like listening to the pad and you put a reverb on it and then you turn the dry signal down and the wet signal up. Right, and so if you hit accept, it'll just apply that to the whole sample. That sounds very pretty actually. I like that. So next thing, the drum loop stretcher. I like this. There's also a time stretch and pitch shift, which looks similar, but it doesn't put it through the same process. And so I personally prefer this one because you have more control over what's happening, but feel free to play around with both. So what this does is it will take the sample and it will apply a certain form of stretching and this one here pogo sounds like a pogo delay right um there's echo grains which sort of like stretches it and then sort of chops and sprinkles the grains of the track amongst itself and then there's just a stretch one which i like all three for different reasons so when you play around with it enough you get to be more familiar with what they do and then you'll be working on a track and you'll sort of be thinking like hmm I want this sound how do I get that and then you'll sort of be more familiar with them so the time multiplier if it's in the center it will be playing at normal speed see uh, up here in the corner 100% so it'll just be playing at 100% of the normal speed turn it up that's 200%, right? So it'll be playing uh, two times slower. So it'll be two times longer as a sample than the original, and then 400%. If you turn it down, it'll be twice as fast because it'll be 50% the original speed and 25%. But for ambience, I prefer to turn it up to like at least 200%. So it's twice as long. And this is the pitch course multiplier here. So if you leave this in the center, when it's done stretching, it will put it back so it's in the exact same original pitch that the sample was. If you turn this up, it'll be like an octave higher than the original sample. And for me personally, I like to put it down 50%, so it'll be an octave lower than the original sample. And of course you have like fine tuning with the pitch if you want or need and then the pitch shift course. So I think, yeah, you can change the number of semitones that the sample's gonna be. And this auto slice here, I'll show you. So you actually have like two different stretchers in here. So with the auto slice on, you get this. It will slice the sample up as well as stretching it. Here's my problem with that when it hits each new slice, you get this kind of nasty clicking noise. And you can kind of get rid of that by right clicking, go into tools, and then de-click in all regions click out all regions or right clicking on this and right clicking on that but it's not perfect it kind of the clicking is gone so it's less nasty but you can still hear it 
So if you want, I mean, you could totally use this method and then drop this into a slice X and then resample from there. But what I like to do is start over and then apply the blur again and then use this other form with the auto slice off. And what that will do, let's say echo grains, let's see what that sounds like. So it's going to be twice as long and an octave lower than the original sample. And then it just stretches it and applies that specific form of stretching, echo grains, that we chose earlier. Pretty cool. Um, you could apply these filters in any way you want to though. So we could take this and then stretch it. Uh, maybe pogo this time. Hit accept. Then blur it. Here's a fun thing. So you can use this stretching, right? But if you leave the time multiplier at dead center, 100%, it'll play at the same speed, but it will still quote unquote stretch it. So it will apply these filters and processing through it. And you t change the pitch multiplier to be normal as well, so that the pitch is the same. And then it just starts adding some extra stuff Oops, I left. Yeah, I left auto slice on. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, so you can kind of see the wavetable is starting to change. And then you just start getting different sounds. And with different samples, I mean, try this with like vocals. You get some incredible sounds out of this if you just throw an acapella through here. I think that actually sounds pretty great. So you can just throw this in here, get like a sub bass that's in key. So what key is this? It doesn't say. It ought to though. You, I'm sure you can figure it out. So like you get the key and then just get like a sub bass and then maybe find an acapella in the same key and then throw that in Edison and apply all the same techniques I just showed you and then layer them together and just like, you can make something incredible, honestly. I mean, Serum's definitely like way better for like basses and drums and stuff, but I think that's awesome. Okay, um, so I'll show you a few examples of which I've applied these uh, sounds and techniques. Let's see, how long are we going right now? Does it say? Oh God, 40 fucking minutes, Jesus Christ. Okay. I'm gonna have to cut this short, um, but here's some examples of me using those resampling techniques. So this entire track, every instance of Serum is resampling something that I made, right? So let's uh, see pattern. Yeah. Right, so this is me resampling a vowel base I made and then adjusting the pitch 
in the panning and put an envelope on the pitch and everything. <laughs> Got some effects going on in here. Um, let's see, pattern 10. So I recorded like a vowel bass and then I applied an LFO to a phaser going at a certain rate and then adjusted the pan and going at a certain rate. Fun stuff. Um, over here, I got a fun noise. No. Right? So I took this. Let's see. Oh, wait. And I put it through the effector um, vocal processor and convolver, just some reverb and stuff. Um, normally, though, I would throw it into here and then apply some serum stuff. But I thought, I mean, for the sake of the track, I just used the sample directly. But you could resample that in serum. <laughs> So yeah, um, I don't know, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching, friends. <laughs>